I am going to talk now about the logistics of the redeployment. So the idea here is to give you expectations on what, how you'll get notified, um, what will happen as the plane lands and that process takes place, and then the days following for the soldiers portion of the reintegration training. So at the end of, of my pitch, I will open it up for questions. Um, and so, you know, there, feel free to ask for clarification or if I didn't cover something, um, by all means, ask the question. Okay, we generally will know for sure that your soldier's coming home by 72 hours before the plane lands. Some cases it'll be earlier, some cases it shouldn't be much later because they have to fly to Kyrgyzstan. And once they get to Kyrgyzstan, there's a pretty good chance that their flight will be on schedule, barring any maintenance issues or anything like that. Okay, so at a minimum, you should have three days knowledge before your soldier comes home. The chain of command will contact you telephonically from your battalion uh, chain of command. If the phone number's right in the roster that they have, okay, and, and that's always a big if. So please encourage, and for the families who are not here, please encourage them to make sure that their numbers are updated with their FRGs, because that's where the rubber meets the road. The other thing that they will be contacted, or not contacted, but the information will be po posted on the brigade and the battalion virtual FRG websites. And we will have, it will say, you know, main body one, expected arrival time this time, and an expected deployment ceremony time this time. Please check back for changes because flights do change. We had a flight arrive last week, four hours before it was supposed to arrive. We found out it was coming in one hour early. And so in that case, we made phone calls and tried to contact the, you know, the families who were on, whose soldiers were on that flight. Um, and we post it on the VFRG. So we will do our best to notify you, especially if it's a last minute thing. If that flight is an early morning flight or in the middle of the night, we will attempt to contact you by phone because we know you're not gonna be referring to your VFRG at three o'clock in the morning, okay? So we will do our best. I ask from, from y'all's perspective that you make sure your contact information is correct so that uh, we have good comms with you. All right. Arrival at the ADAG. The ADAG stands for the Arrival Departure Airfield Control Group. It's a big building that is right there by the It's a Great Day to Be a Soldier bridge uh, on Biggs Airfield. So you'll see ADAG or hear that term. And so it's basically the, the building where the plane's gonna land and we'll have the welcome home ceremony. So the way that will work, um, as you come in the gate, there will, if you don't know how to get to the DAG, there will be strip maps with the guards. So they will be able to hand you a strip map if you ask for it. Strip maps will also be posted on the VFRG. The, uh, the planes, once, when it lands, you will be able to see the plane land and the soldiers will walk past you. You won't see them again for another 60 to 90 minutes, depending on how big the flight is. There are certain things that they have to do, uh, such as they have to turn in all their weapons and their sensitive items. They will go through a, um, a random behavioral health screening and they will be introduced to the behavioral health folks so they have some resources to lean on if they're, if they're struggling. Um, they'll be scanned in so that your, your pay will stop and you won't get overpaid with all those combat exclusion pays and uh, hazardous duty and uh, hazardous fire pay and all that. And as well, the single soldiers who live in the barracks will get their barracks key right there. Soldiers who are geographical bachelors will be given instructions as to how to go to the geographical bachelor housing. For those of you who don't, don't know, geographical bachelors are those whose families are not here, so they don't have a place to live at this time in El Paso. And the geographical bachelors will have 45 days to live in that temporary housing, so which gives them time to look for an apartment or somewhere to live or move their family back into El Paso, depending on what the case is. Um, and then the, finally, they'll get a safety brief. They'll be told where to be next and uh, then they'll march in for a ceremony which lasts approximately one minute and then they will be released. All right, so, so they'll be back in your hands then and uh, the next time that we'll need to see them will be the following day because, and I'll get to a slide here that, that shows you what that looks like. All right, reintegration is an eight day model. So two of the, six of those days are either classes or they're logistical things. 
to to get uh, get pays term get their pay to get their TDY pay, which you get a daily allowance of, you know, of a certain amount of money, and settle their travel vouchers. Soldiers who pack their household goods um, will, will, on day one, begin that process or set an appointment up so that they can get their household goods quickly. And those who store their, their, their vehicles in the vehicle lot will get those back into their hands there on day one. Um, days two through six, are a variety of going through soldier readiness processing, which is the medical and the administrative portion to get you back here in the, you know, into the United States to make sure that uh, your shots are up to date and all that kind of thing. Um, as well, there are some reintegration classes. And the one I want to highlight, and I'll show you specifically what's on it in a minute, is in, uh, in mod six. We call them mods because we can interchange you know, each one of these days as needed. But mod six is, is uh, one where the families are, are invited and encouraged to, to come because it's, it's the kind of training that will benefit you both to hear it together. So six days of classes and then the, five, the seventh and eighth day are a 48 hour pass. Woo, yeah, exactly. Okay, so here's the criteria we're using. So if a flight arrives before 1900, which would be 7 p.m. in the evening, <clears throat> Then, so if it arrives before, the folks on that flight will start their reintegration the very next morning. And the purpose of that is, number one, to make sure that soldiers are accounted for after that first, you know, that first day and night at home. It's to get the household goods started and it's to get their cars into their hands so they're not just stuck in the barracks or stuck at home uh, without any transportation, without any of their stuff. The, uh, if the flight arrives after 1900, then they will not do the full reintegration the next day. They will just come in at 12.30. There will again be an accountability formation and the only thing that we'll do on that day is for the soldiers who need it, they'll go to the POV lot and get their car and they will arrange for household goods so we can get that process started. So that is the only, it'll be a 30 minute day for, uh, for, for most. Now if a flight arrives on a Friday, then the soldier will will come in on Saturday for that 12.30 because we still only get household goods and POVs. Okay, so that's, we will have formation at 12.30. If it comes on a Saturday, they'll come in on Sunday to do the same thing at 12.30. And if it's four day weekend, the same rules apply. So other than that, there will be no weekend training. Okay, so if, if it's not the day after the flight, no weekend training. So your soldier will, in reality, will be in reintegration for a total of 11 to 13 days because you have to include the weekends. If that, I hope that makes sense. Now it's going to be a short day because we want the soldiers to, to not only go through the reintegration classes and the stuff that they have to do, but also to start reintegrating with their families. So the work day, a normal work day is 0730 to no later than 1300 or 1 p.m. Okay. They will stay as a flight. So they'll, they'll go through all the classes with everybody from their flight, no matter what unit they're in. The units do not have, the, or the rear Ds or the units who are back here on the ground cannot pull, they don't have the, the authority to, to task your soldier while he's in reintegration. So that will guarantee that he's done by 1300 every day. Except for there are select situations. For instance, you know, soldier work after 1300 is going to get his POV. But for most of the flights, you're not going to get pulled and told to work an entire day. Reintegration is your, is your own one and only task. Now we have to finish reintegration, all the, all the mods before the 48 hour pass or before block leave occurs. Okay, so that's why it's so important that, that uh, everyone's at the right place at the right time. And then finally, as I mentioned a minute ago, when, you, when your soldier goes through day six of reintegration, um, y'all are y'all are very much encouraged to participate in that because some of the classes, um, you know, are stuff that will benefit both of you. And so hopefully y'all can see that. I know it's a little bit small, but uh, there's AER, some resiliency, um, marriage classes. They're all things. They're they're, they're going to touch on the same a lot of the same stuff we're going to talk about today. But it's something you can go through together. And again, that will be done at, by 12:30 that day. All right, finally, um, I'll touch on block leave. Hopefully y'all have heard the block leave dates, but if you haven't, block leave begins on August 10th, and it will end on September 4th. That'll be the first day back. 
So nearly three and a half weeks of block leave. If your soldier comes in on one of the first flights, he's not taking block leave until block leave. Okay, so he's gonna come in, reintegrate, and then continue to work to set the brigade up and prepare to receive the rest of the brigade. And then block leave is dedicated for that purpose. Now, I will tell you from a soldier perspective, and it ties right in to, um, to some of the stuff you'll hear later today. As, as a soldier deployed, I came back in February, and the best thing that, that my wife, Amy, here was, was able to do to prepare me, it, it deals with communication. Because you know that we men as a species are not always the greatest of communicators. Amen. You didn't, you didn't have to agree to me that, that hard work. But what Amy did for me was she, she was either on the phone or via email or Skype, you know, or all three modes because she knows how dense I am. She would tell me, these are the things I'm concerned about. Jackson, my son, has changed in this way, so don't, you know, don't be surprised when you see this. Or, you know, one of the kids really needs you to give them some attention when they get home because they're struggling. So I didn't come in blind, and that was very helpful because otherwise I probably would not have realized that fast enough. And I did this, and it opened me up to tell her the same thing. Hey, I'm really struggling with this. I sleep about five hours a night, and I'm just going on to sleep for about a week, you know, um, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But the, the biggest thing is open up that line of communication. And let, I'm, sure, I'm sure your spouse is better than me, but you bringing it up and encouraging the conversation can go a long way because, you know, we, we can be led even if we may not initiate, you know, may not initiate the conversation. So for me personally, that was very beneficial. And I know you're going to hear a lot of other stuff today. And I know you get, you know, if you sign up for the communications classes and it gets touched on in most of these because it, it, it is so important. Okay, that is all the comments I have. Now, I will open it up for questions, so please, if there's something I didn't cover or something that you would like to know from me, feel free to ask. If you don't want to ask it in public, I'll be around all day. So just come, come hit me up or, uh, um, you know, come engage me. Any questions?